You're listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. Thanks to Concordia University, Wisconsin for supporting The Coffee Hour. Find out more about Concordia University, Wisconsin at cuw.edu. Live Uncommon. We have some fun history. We'd like to cover really cool history stories. Yes, and this one is a local history story. Joining us today, friends from St. John's Lutheran Church in Arnold, Missouri, Pastor Jeremy Schultz, senior pastor at St. John's. Pastor Schultz, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having us. And alongside with Pastor Schultz, Jason Chris, longtime member of St. John's. Jason, welcome to the Coffee Hour. Thank you so much. It's nice to have you guys in studio and spend some time chatting about it, the, the history of St. John's in Arnold. And it, it's just nice to have local folks here in studio mm-hmm. get to visit for a little <laughs> bit. So tell us, so Jason, we'll start with you. And you've been working on documenting the history or pulling together and researching mm-hmm. the history of St. John's Arnold. Before we even get into the history, how long have you been at St. John's Arnold? I've been essentially my, my whole life. Yeah, I've my family's been there for a long time. I went to grade school there, you know, confirmed there. So yeah, I've been there my entire life. Wow. So we probably have some friends in common as well. Then. <laughs> so tell us about the founding of St. John's Lutheran Church and school. In Arnold, Absolutely. Yeah, I'm glad you said that and school because the church and the school have both been there for almost 175 years now. But the founding is pretty interesting. Honestly, if you look at the history of the LCMS and how the Saxon Germans came over in the eight, late 1830s, mm-hmm. the early founders of St. John's actually came over earlier than that in the mid 1830s. Oh, really? And so the, you know, there really wasn't a church that was founded for about 10 years, but just some of those early founders in those mid 1830s, we actually, the church property sits on one of those founding members, John Dornsife. He has, he had land and that some of that land was sold to the church early on or right when it was founded. Beyond that, if you look at the early history of St. John's, it's very similar to some of the other old churches in the St. Louis area. If you look at St. Paul's and De Pere, and I think Emmanuel and Olivet are really old churches as well. They all were initially affiliated with the German Evangelical Church, and that is the same for St. John's. And that happened in the 1840s. And then if you, once you get to the late 1840s and 1848, that's when they decided that they wanted to be affiliated with a Lutheran church. In, in our history books, it says a true Lutheran church. <laughs> and they sent a delegation up to Trinity Lutheran in Soulard, to speak with Dr. Walther. So we had three delegates that that went up there. And it's interesting to me that these folks were in their 20s and 30s and 40s, right? So they're just young people Mm -hmm. going up to talk to Dr. Walther in early, the the history says the spring of 1848. And then by June 4th of 1848, that's when the first pastor, Pastor J.M. Johannes, was installed as pastor at St. John's. So that's sort of some of the early history of of the church. That is so cool. And and that is a very interesting point. A lot of the history that happens early in our synod, it is a lot of young people. And even with like later on the creation of the Walther League, that was all like late teen, early 20s kind of people. That's a, just a very interesting point too. Absolutely. So what happened, what happened once the church was founded? What do you know anything about the actual like starting day? Like, was there a celebration when the church actually was started? So we don't know the actual founding day. Some of those <laughs> early records have been lost, but we do have church records, I believe from the 1850s in terms of meeting records and things like that. We do know that a couple, one interesting fact about those early days, I think the first decade or so of the church, there were four pastors. So you think, wow, there's a lot of turnover there. But actually two of the first four pastors passed away hmm. in office while they were pastors. And I think I think that just goes to show the wilderness that they were really mm-hmm. living in at that point. Mm-hmm. I mean, in the greater St. Louis area now, of course, you know, it's all suburbs where Arnold is now, but that was not the case 175 years ago. That was wilderness. And I think just, uh, you know, the challenges that, that those people faced were, were borne out and that the past couple of pastors actually passed away during that time. So, but in terms of the early founding, you know, there was initially a log church that was there for the first 25 or so years before they renovated it to a frame church. And as I said, there was an initial, a school was there initially as well. And, you know, with maybe a half a dozen students, but the, the founding members, they, they, you know, worked their way through some of those early challenges and, and really grew the church. You you brought up a, a really good point that some might not recognize if they're, maybe they're familiar with Missouri geography and, or the, the early Lutherans here in the Midwest as well. Where is Arnold, Missouri? Mm-hmm. For those who don't know where Arnold is, you know, today, if you look at it, it you, you mentioned it's in, in the suburbs, but back then it was out 
in the across woods. Across the river. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, right. Yeah. It was, it was out in the woods. So for those not familiar with Arnold, Missouri and, and our geography here, can you give us just kind of a, a, a quick uh, sure. overview of that? Sure, sure. So St. Louis County and St. Louis City, City are the sort of the main hub and Jefferson County where Arnold resides is just the county just immediately south of St. Louis County. And Arnold is on the northern edge of that county. But as Sarah said, it's separated by a river, the Merrimack River. So it's about 25 miles south, I guess, from okay. the city. Forgot about the Merrimack River. Oh, true, yes. that separates. You cross the river. <laughs> That's true. I didn't think about that. That's the county line, isn't it, yep. right there? Yep. So, and you're, so today it's like, what, 10 minutes, mm-hmm. you know, from no St. Louis deal. to Arnold. But, <laughs> but it, at that time, at the founding of the, the congregation, that would have been quite a journey, plus the whole river and yeah. trying to get across the river. <laughs> that would be quite a challenge. And as we, re- we, I think we talked a little bit about the Saxons in Perry County as well. Mm-hmm. You're not close to them either at mm-hmm. that point. Correct. Right. Yeah. So if you look back at that history, it's not really clear why those Germans settled in Jefferson County. Did you know? Did they know of other Germans that were settling in Perry County or in St. Louis? But it is clear that some did. And in fact, the all of the founders of St. John's came from Hessen-Darmstadt area in Germany, which is hmm. near modern-day Frankfurt. Mm-hmm. So that is a very different area. It's several hundred miles away from Saxony. So mm-hmm. it's not clear if they really knew that other Germans were settling in the area. They just happened happened to settle in, in that area. Do we know anything about the history of why they immigrated, why they came here? To know any of that history? Don't know that history. We do know just through it. It's, it's amazing, the digital age. You can mm-hmm. go out and find yeah. almost anything now. But we've been able to find where some of them had were married in Germany. So cool. actually in this history book that we're creating, there are some pictures of some of those churches. Of course, we think of 175 years as a really long time here, but when you go to Europe, that's a very short time. <laughs> yeah. And so some of those churches actually that were in towns such as Flugstadt and, and some other towns like that, they actually, the churches are there and we have pictures of those and we know that's where these founding members lived. So you mentioned earlier, you've been a member of St. John, your whole life. Mm-hmm. I'm going to assume then that that means you have family there as well. What's your, your family's connection to St. John's? Yeah, well, my family and really extended family. St. John's is a really neat place and I, I love it very much. And there are a number of families there. And I don't know how unique this is, honestly, in this modern age anymore, but there are a number of families that have been there since the beginning. You know, I was actually in church this past Sunday and speaking to a couple of members who's family I'm connected to, we're all sort of connected and they're, they're those founding members as well. I, you know, I went, I go to church there, was married there, went to school there, as did my parents, as did my grandparents, as did my great grandparents, my great, great grandparents. So there's a really long connection there, not just with the Christ name, but other names such as Flam and Dornseif and Voimner and some of these other German names who were the founders of the church. That is really cool to have that kind of legacy and to be able to, to trace all the way back to the beginning and, and to kind of see how the church has evolved and changed over the years. What are some of those highlights of the history throughout the years of how St. John has been able to serve the community? Yeah, so I think when it first founded, as I said, you know, it was just really wilderness, right? Mm-hmm. And so I think some of the early ways that it served the community just was by pulling these folks together, these believers together to be part of a church. You know, through the years, some of those big points in the history, certainly one of the major, probably I might even say the most important, if you can say that, mm-hmm. point in the church is the 1929, so our second sanctuary, 1929 sanctuary, that was a huge moment for the church. That really transformed the church from really, as I said, a wilderness church to at that time, more people were starting to move out to Jefferson County. It was a big brick church as opposed to a frame church. So that was a pretty significant part in the church history. Another significant part is after World War II, as many of the, as much of the country was working through the baby boomer sort of time, St. John's was no exception. From the founding of the church up to the 19, say 1950, the church was it grew from basically zero to 400 members around that time. So not a huge growth, but mm-hmm. over that first hundred years. But then in the 1950s and 60s, the congregation quadrupled in size Whoa. up to, you know, probably 1,600. And I think we're about 2,000 members today. So that just shows that baby boomer, that was a huge time of change for the church. 
that was also, and I, I could be wrong, but that's probably close to the time that Interstate 55 was constructed, right? Absolutely. Hmm. Absolutely. Which goes into Arnold. For me. Right, right. Sorry, that <laughs> passes through Arnold. Yes, from St. Louis. Yeah, Sorry. it's um, easy to get there. I, I know. Now I'm thinking, when when were the first bridges built? This whole river thing and connecting <laughs> to the city. <laughs> when were the first bridges built? I wonder how that impacted the, that community and the, the growth in that community as well. You know, predating the the interstate, but mm-hmm. when were the first bridges built well, we across have to be the Maryland? Careful here, I, I could go all day on this. Ooh, ooh, okay. <laughs> no, but and, and all serious, I don't know when the first bridges were built, but I do know that initially, you know, there were ferries that crossed the Merrimack. So that's oh, likely yeah. those founders that 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 traveled up to see Walther in 1848. They they ferried across the Merrimack and then went all the way up to St. Louis. I think those bridges. I mean, to 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 your question though. That was likely in the um, in the 30, 20s or 30s, hundreds is when those first bridges or steel bridges were built. Mm-hmm. Uh, and in fact, now that I say that, I believe the first bridge was right around that time, 1930, is when they built a bridge across the Merrimack. Hmm. So that would make sense then when the yeah. community started to grow. <laughs> yeah putting all the pieces together and then the congregation <laughs> quadruples. Fascinating. Yes. We're really getting cool. caught in all kinds of rabbit trails in this great That's history. Right. This is really we fun. Like history here. <laughs> <laughs> Our guests today are friends from St. John's Lutheran Church in Arnold, Missouri, celebrating a significant anniversary, 175 years in 2023. And we get to share that history today. More to talk about here on the Coffee Hour in just a moment. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. <laughs> At Concordia University, Wisconsin, we believe you were created for a reason, to use your God-given gifts to help others, to live a life of self-sacrifice in a me-first world, to live a life that's uncommon. Whether you're taking one of 50-plus online programs or learning with us in person on the shores of Lake Michigan, you'll be equipped to make an uncommon impact. Learn more at cuw.edu. Concordia University, Wisconsin. Live uncommon. Welcome back to the Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. Celebrating a milestone for our friends, our brothers and sisters at St. John's Lutheran Church and School in Arnold, Missouri, celebrating 175 years this coming year of, of proclaiming the gospel in Arnold, Missouri, and the surrounding community. And our guest today, Pastor Jeremy Schultz, Senior Pastor at St. John's Lutheran Church in Arnold, Missouri, and Jason Christ, historian and <laughs> longtime member of St. John's. I'm so fascinated by this history and just seeing how the, the community grew and how the congregation grew right along with the community. Pastor, how long have you been at St. John's Arnold? It's a little a little while now. Yeah, it's it's a solid decade. I've been there hmm. 10 years. Wow. Yeah, came yeah. in July of 2012. So learning about the history coming into to St. John's Arnold, learning about the history and being now a part of the community for 10 years, it, what's it like to see this history and how St. John's has grown along with the community and continuing to be a part of the community? What's it like for you as pastor? It's incredibly rewarding is what it is. I love St. John's with everything that's within me. And, you know, from the moment I came, it wasn't like I was an outsider. There's something really special about the people there. They're so welcoming. And certainly I felt that as a pastor, but that is, that's just the way the congregation is with everybody who comes. But what I love about that personally is like, this history became my history, you know? I don't have to, my family doesn't necessarily go back at all, you know? It doesn't, it certainly doesn't go back <laughs> seven generations, you know, but 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 this church, it's my church, you know? It's our church and it just, it means so much to all of us that are there. Mm-hmm. So how does St. John serve the community today? How does that, the, the stuff that St. John does, does yeah. now, how does that connect to the history of all of these years. Sure, great question. One of the things I love about our church is that you started it out saying St. John's Lutheran Church and School. So we've mm-hmm. had a school from the very beginning and that continues today. And and it's a strong school today. We're very, very blessed. So one of the ways that it serves the community is simply by having that place where Christian education is taught and caught every single day, you know, five days a week, 
eight hours a day, I always say there's nothing like the Lutheran school. And we have so many people coming because they truly want their children to experience that. And that's not our only avenue by any means of, of, uh, of instruction you know we have all of the all of the other other things that we do and uh, you know with vacation bible school and confirmation obviously and all kinds of other avenues for christian growth for children but it's huge i think in this day and age it's something people are really looking for too they're looking for help in raising their children to know the lord and saint john's is blessed to be able to provide that and it's always been doing that so So that's one, but we're blessed with a a social ministry arm of our congregation called Care Connections. And Care Connections is in in many ways a front door to our community as well. It does three things currently. It provides free and reduced Christian counseling. And we do that through partners like Lutheran Family and Children's Services in particular. It also runs support groups, you know, many even court ordered support groups, parenting classes, and then others like parenting a second time around, you know, for grandparents, for instance, that are raising their children, uh, all, all kinds of other support groups as well. And then then the one-on-one sort of case management where we can help people to a better way of life. And in so doing with all those things, it's, again, why do we do it? Why do we have a Lutheran school? Why do we do anything? Well, it's for the sake of the gospel. It's for the sake of getting Jesus inside of people's hearts and lives. So we've been blessed, I think, to to have success with those things. You know, the gospel has created those opportunities for us and we're just seeking to to follow them. So yeah, we love our community. We're just right in the center of our community of Arnold too. So Arnold is no longer the wilderness between (laughs) St. Louis and Perry County. For our listeners not familiar with Arnold, Missouri and the community, how would you describe it today? Oh, Arnold's very much grown into a suburb of St. Louis. I mean, I I did field work at at St. John's Arnold when I was a seminary student. So back in 94, 95, 96, you know, that's the way I came to St. John's was somebody remembered me, you know, all these years later. But but when I was here first time around and probably first knew Jason back then, you know, um, my goodness, it was different. It was it was so different that when I visited just a couple of years before I had the call, it was my first time back. I hardly recognized the place. And I, I'm not talking just the church, although we had a new church, but the community of Arnold, it, it really has grown into, it's always been a wonderful community for people to live in and raise their families, but it has grown leaps and bounds um, over time. So, yeah. What are some of the ways that you're celebrating this big anniversary. I know there's a lot going on, but over the next year, is that right? It's, that's right. That's right. So what we decided when we started started this out, we got got a, got a group of Coalition of the Willing together and <laughs> said, how do we want to celebrate this? What do we want to do? And we decided that we'd like to, like to start in the fall of the year before. So we've done that. And we have put together a whole calendar of special events and opportunities. For example, this coming weekend, as we celebrate Reformation, we have Sons of the Congregation. So two young men that have grown up, that are now pastors serving the church, one in Iowa, one in Michigan, they're going to be back. They're both going to preach over the weekend. So it's going to be a lot of fun. And people, I think people are pretty excited. Our hope was that people come to more than one service. I think that that's going to happen, you know, in our community because people want to hear them both. And we're having them at different services to preach and to lead and do all those sorts of fun things. But we're, we're also having, we had a, a former pastor back, you know, the one who preceded me, Reverend Dr. Jack Miller. We're having so we're having other special speakers as well. Um, we're we had our chicken dinner. We had fun <laughs> things like that going on. But what I'm really excited about is, of course, our big celebration. So we don't know exactly when St. John's was founded. Maybe we talked about that a little bit earlier. We know it was the spring of '48, and so on May 14th, what we're going to do is we're going to have one worship service, so all of us can be together, and we're going to do that at Rickman Auditorium in Arnold. And so Rickman Auditorium is a place that holds about 1,200 people, and so we're all going to be in there together and and having a, a very, very special climactic worship service, at which time we hope to even paint a picture for what the future will be that God's leading us into, or what we hope, what we <laughs> dream about, what we, what we think it might be. So it's going to be a fun time for sure. 
I'm sure lots of opportunities to mark the occasion throughout the year as well, just celebrating, giving thanks to God for that. Mm -hmm. I want to go back to the history a little bit more because, Jason, it sounds like you were having fun doing the research for this history. (laughs) So where are you in this project in terms of of gathering the history and and putting it together? You're writing a book uh, Mm -hmm. of the history, is that right? Yeah, and I I certainly do not want to take all the credit for that. There have been, uh, throughout the history, there have been a number of books that have been written. So we, we glean a lot of information from, from that. But I do want to say, though, you know, just give a shout out and to some of the organizations within the Lutheran Church Missouri, Missouri Synod. Well, first of all, some, some of the Concordia Historical Institute was a, gr- a great help. Just the LCMS, the Synod itself, was help with some history. We're working through Concordia Publishing House here in St. Louis who has been outstanding to work with. I'm just really thankful for their ministry. So yeah, we've been pulling this book together. It's about 200 pages, lots of pictures. We're listing all the confirmation classes. The first one was 1849, you know, a year (laughs) year after the church was founded. So we're listing all of those. We're very nearly complete with the book. It's going through final editing now, and it will be published, printed, hopefully by mid-February or March. So right now we have, you know, we're doing some pre-sales for folks and it's it's been a labor of love, honestly. And like I said, it's not all me, certainly. There have been a lot of people that have been involved and provided information, but it has absolutely been a lot of fun putting it together and just learning all those things. Pastor and I just received an email this morning from someone who's been helping us with some of that early history with maybe some clarifying information about some of those early founders and and where they came from and and those sorts of things. So it's just an evolving sort of story that we're just uncovering. The story is what it is, but we're just uncovering what that story is and it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, that's that's quite a, a major rabbit hole to be to be into for a long time, but it's just such interesting work to be able to find all of that. Do you have some favorite things or like unusual things that you've found digging through all this history that have just kind of been some really fun things for you to learn about this congregation that your family has been part of for such a long time? I think, you know, some of the early, the fun things are learning about the school and how that's grown and Mm. maybe a a little tidbit that I found just from some handwritten notes from our first principal. So obviously the pastor taught for many years. The first principal came in in the 1940s. Oh, wow. I found, I actually received some handwritten notes from him and just a little thing like the old church building, it was situated such that the little softball field that they had his notes said that if the pitcher pitched and the catcher missed it, the ball would go running down into the down the hill into the old cemetery. <laughs> and if the batter hit it and hit a double to left field, it would the ball would go in the new cemetery. So just little <laughs> things like that that you're like, wow, that could be lost to history just but someone thought to give me these notes, right? And so now we're trying to capture that sort of information. So where did you find these notes is the real question. Like, yeah. Did someone have them at home or did you find them in an old desk somewhere? <laughs> yeah, right. No. Uh, so it was actually the that first principal's son, his name is, well, the first principal is Roland Flantz, and that uh, his son Warren Flantz is a member at St. John's, and I'm related to him, of course. <laughs> of course. And so we just had a, a chat one day, and, and he provided me some of his dad's old picture book, and I was just looking through it, and there were these notes, right? And so, you know, things like that. The, the church went through, through some challenging times as well, and in the 1870s, there was a challenging time that we learned about that I didn't know about before, and it was, I think, Reverend Bunger, is how you say his name, mm-hmm. from, uh, from Trinity, came down. He was a Part of the you know leader in the synod at that time and mm-hmm. came down to mediate some some disputes that were at the church so of course the devil's always at work and mm-hmm. we saw that there but you know those are some of the interesting and fun things that that i found that is uh, just i'm sure reading all that history and putting it all together is like you said a labor of love but also very fascinating as mm-hmm. well i'm sure we are just about out of time. Where can we find more information on the events celebrating 175 years of God's grace at St. John's? Well, certainly you can visit our website, you know, www.sjlarnold.org, and you can find out information there. You can download our app. That's easy enough to find with our logo on that. But yeah, there are. There's a whole calendar of events happening and the ongoing work of the Lord, the ongoing ministry that he calls us to. One of the things I want to make sure to say is that what I'm 
so full for is that the gospel that was proclaimed right from the start used to be proclaimed today. You know, God has never taken a, a, a weekday or a weekend off. He has been faithful to his people at St. John's for 175 years, and we're so grateful for that. And as grateful as we are for the past, we're so thankful that he's entrusted the present and the future to us to continue to proclaim his word, to live by his word, and to grow his kingdom so that he may be glorified and and God's people might be strengthened in their faith for, for daily and eternal life. Our guest today, the Reverend Jeremy Schultz, senior pastor at St. John's Lutheran Church in Arnold, Missouri, and Jason Chris, longtime member of St. John's. Thank you so much for being our guest on The Coffee Hour You're today. You're welcome. Thank you. Very welcome. Thank you. You've been listening to The Coffee Hour. I'm Andy Bates. I'm Sarah Golseth. The Coffee Hour with Andy and Sarah is a production of KFUO. To support the Coffee Hour and KFUO Radio, visit KFUO.org. You can also text KFUO to 41444 or send an email to gifts at KFUO.org. And you can call us at 800-844-0524. KFUO. Christ for you anytime, anywhere.